on World News Tonight. Life on the line. Ukraine unveils that it has foiled an alleged attempt on its president, Vladimir Zelensky's life. Migrants aboard. UK government begins moving asylum seekers onto its controversial death trap housing barge. Hope on the horizon. New study finds treatment to cure and slow the progression of mortal newborn diseases. And dancing pandas. Giant Panda Dance Drama premieres at Universe Aid with Oriental Aesthetic Presentation. This is Ada Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and you are watching World News. We begin as the war in Ukraine takes a bleak turn, with Ukraine reporting that they have foiled an attack on its president's life, as Ukrainian intelligence has detained a shop assistant over an alleged plot to assassinate Vladimir Zelensky. The detained woman has not been named publicly, but is from the southern Ukrainian region of Mykolaiv. She had reportedly been gathering intelligence about Zelensky's planned visit to Mykolaiv in order to plan a Russian airstrike to kill the president. The SBU said that it caught the woman red-handed as she was trying to pass intelligence to the invaders. In monitoring the communications of the woman, she also had the task of identifying the location of electronic warfare systems and warehouses with ammunition of the armed forces. She allegedly travelled around the territory of the district and filmed the locations of Ukrainian objects. And now on to that rare and tragic mid-air collision of two helicopters on the front line in the battle against wildfires in California. All three on board were reported to be deceased. Tonight, the urgent investigation into what caused the mid-air collision of two firefighting helicopters in Southern California, killing three people, including two high-ranking fire officials. There's a mid-air collision between 37 Sierra and 5 Alpha Sierra. You can see the damaged blades and scorched hillside where one of the helicopters crashed. They were part of six aircraft battling a small fire in Riverside County near Palm Springs on Sunday evening. It was still light out with good visibility. A Sikorsky Sky Crane helicopter like this one, which typically carries water or retardant, was able to land safely. The Bell helicopter that crashed was being used for observation. All three on board killed. Authorities today identifying those victims as Assistant Chief Josh Bischoff, Captain Tim Rodriguez, and Tony Souza, a contracted pilot. Officials raising a giant flag for a solemn procession. Oh! Fellow firefighters saluting as the bodies of the victims drove past. Now, lawyers for former President Donald Trump are firing back after a request by the special counsel for a protective order concerning the evidence in the case involving the 2020 election. Tonight, a new push in the legal tug of war between former President Trump and the special counsel. It's free speech. This means that we cannot ever criticize. In a late filing, Trump lawyers countered Jack Smith's request for a protective order, arguing it violates his First Amendment rights. Worse, it does so against its administration's primary political opponent during an election season. The special counsel asked the court to, in effect, put up guardrails to protect the government's evidence, a consequence of Mr. Trump's prolific social posts. Among them, if you go after me, I'm coming after you. The special counsel writes, it could have a harmful chilling effect on witnesses or adversely affect the fair administration of justice in this case. Mr. Trump firing off his own response. No, I shouldn't have a protective order placed on me because it would impinge upon my right to free speech. Trump attorney John Lauro outlined defense strategy. Mr. Trump had every right to petition government and enforce his First Amendment rights. And made headlines when he described Mr. Trump's pressure on Pence to halt the electoral count. A technical violation of the Constitution is not a violation of criminal law. That's just plain wrong. In other related news, Niger's coup leaders had one week to relinquish power and reinstate House of President Mohamed Bazoum or else face military intervention by the economic community of West African states. Now, Niger and its neighbors are preparing for possible war, and ECOWAS is questioning whether issuing its unprecedented threat was a smart idea to begin with. Despite ECOWAS's ultimatum to Niger's coup leaders to step down from power, 
there's no strong consensus on the possibility of military intervention by the regional West African bloc. For the time being, only three countries have said they're ready to send in the troops. Senegal, Ivory Coast and the region's largest army, Nigeria. We're giving windows of opportunity for those who have aid to come back home. Democracy is what we need and democracy is what we stand for. However, Nigerian President Bola Tinubu, the bloc's current chair, has not yet secured the go-ahead from his Senate, which is required for Nigeria to mobilize its troops. The Senate called for finding other options, pushing back against using force. Some of Niger's other neighbors are firmly opposed to intervening militarily. Chad and Algeria, though not ECOWAS members, share huge land borders with the country and fear the repercussions. We will never intervene with our military. We encourage dialogue. We want stability to come back to Niger. Nigerians themselves feel that the danger is imminent. There's also the issue of Mali and Burkina Faso, both junta-led, who said in a joint statement that any military intervention would be considered a declaration of war. Niamey's junta announced it had closed Nigerian airspace as of Sunday. Should ECOWAS take military action, it would be the first time in recent years it will use force to intervene and restore democracies after military takeover. The bloc has struggled to contain a democratic backslide, with Niger's takeover being the seventh coup in West and Central Africa since 2020. On tonight's segment on the road to the White House, we bring you the latest from an exclusive interview with the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, who made his most definitive comments that Trump did not win in 2020 and Joe Biden's the president. Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis has said former U.S. President Donald Trump lost the 2020 United States election. In his clearest remarks yet, dismissing Trump's false claims that the results were marred by widespread fraud. His comments come as a large majority of Republican voters continue to believe Trump's false election fraud claims, making confirmation of the 2020 results a liability within the party. DeSantis, who sits a distant second behind Trump in the race for the Republican nod, had taken an ambiguous stance on Trump's false claims and he continued to criticize the methods used to expand voting access. DeSantis repeated his concerns about voting methods from the 2020 election, such as voting by mail. But like other Republicans, he said he would embrace the methods he had criticized. Welcome back. The British government began housing asylum seekers on a hawking barge moored on the Dorset course in an effort to cut down on the high cost of housing migrants in hotels, currently running at about $7.6 billion a day, and to deter others from attempting the dangerous English Channel crossing. The move has drawn heavy criticism from locals and rights campaigners. Delayed, but finally here. The first coachload of asylum seekers were met by police at the gates of Portland Port. It's three months since the Bibby Stockholm was pulled into UK waters. Beset by safety concerns, this controversial barge now home to those who've packed their belongings after being in hotels for months. They're economic migrants, that's but, why. Is that what you think? Yes, they are. They come here just for the money. Outside the port, there is tension, a snapshot of an increasingly divided community. We don't think it's humane, but we also don't think it's safe. We don't think the safety issues have been dealt with. And also, you know, nothing's really in place to welcome them. That's why we're here. Refugees are welcome here. Care packages are wheeled in, toiletries and notebooks for the new arrivals. The majority will sleep two to a room. It's basic, but there are facilities to relax and some outside space been told the Care for Calais group has helped stop around 20 asylum seekers from being moved from hotels onto the Bibi. What you've got is a situation where people who've been through potentially torture, detention, kidnapping, conflict, persecution, possibly risk at sea, maybe crossing the Med or the Channel, being almost picked at random to be shoved on board the barge. The government insists the barge is part of the answer to reduce the £6 million a day hotel bill. 
We successfully um, onboarded the first cohort today and there are 15 people on board. Um, we have had um, a few challenges but this is part of an ongoing structured process. We've adopted a standard policy that everybody will be on board between three to nine months. More asylum seekers are due to arrive on the Bibi in the coming days, up to 500 by the autumn. Many will know that their new home is also at the very centre of a growing political storm. We have some good news for you. The fight against motor neuron disease has taken a positive turn. A drug that could slow or even reverse the progression of the condition is on the horizon. Greg Levin was a doctor for 40 years until suddenly, in January last year, he became the patient. I was at work and I couldn't pick things up off my desk with my arms. At 63, he was diagnosed with motor neuron disease. It's just shattering. Uh, for a couple of months at least, we couldn't function. You just totally... Lord. The first thing that you see is the average life expectancy of three to five years. It's shattering. There is currently no cure or treatment for MND, but American company Spinogenics have developed a drug that's showing promise. Test results on mice found it slowed the progression of symptoms, especially in those with ALS, the same type of MND Neil Danaher lives with. What's most remarkable, it increased the lifespan. In MND, connections between neurons in the brain are lost, impacting how the body functions. This drug works by restoring those broken signals. It's a pill you take once a day with the hope that we can restore, you know, walking, memory and breathing. I do find it exciting, yet at the same time I don't think it's going to help me. But it could help future patients, even those living with other neurodegenerative conditions. It's the latest flare-up in the long seething territorial conflict over the disputed waters. The Philippines is demanding that Beijing cease what it describes as unlawful activities in the South China Sea. Fresh tensions over a long-standing dispute. This video released by the Philippine Coast Guard shows their Chinese counterparts blasting a water cannon at a Philippine supply boat. The vessel was on its way to deliver provisions to Philippine troops stationed on Second Thomas Shoal, a submerged reef in the South China Sea. Then, in a move Manila has labelled excessive and offensive, the Chinese Coast Guard appears to block the supply boat's path. Speaking to the press on Monday, the Philippines said Beijing had no right whatsoever to impede its vessels. We demand that the government of the People's Republic of China immediately cease and desist all its coercive, unlawful and unacceptable activities in the West Philippine Sea. China, for its part, said the Philippines' boats had illegally entered its waters. Beijing claims almost all of the South China Sea, an assertion rejected internationally. The United States, the European Union and key allies like Australia and Japan all expressed support for Manila in the wake of the incident. The U.S. State Department said the maneuvers were unwarranted interference in lawful Philippine maritime operations. Such actions by the People's Republic of China are inconsistent with international law and are the latest in repeated threats to the status quo in the South China Sea, directly threatening regional peace and stability. The Philippine military has occupied Second Thomas Shoal since 1999 when it deliberately marooned a Navy ship on the reef. China has long demanded the ship's removal and has in the past used lasers and water cannons to prevent Manila from delivering supplies to the atoll. Now, just when we thought we were nearing the end of the extreme summer heat, more weather woes lie ahead as Typhoon Kanun approaches South Korea before reaching the southeastern coast. Packing winds as fast as 44 meters per second, Typhoon Kanun is now expected to hit South Korea's southeastern region later this week. According to the Korea Meteorological Administration on Monday, the typhoon is set to arrive 90 kilometers southwest of Busan on Thursday. The agency warned that once it arrives on the Korean peninsula, the winds will be strong enough to derail a running train. After arriving the country's southeast, the typhoon is then expected to advance northward, making its way up the Korean peninsula. 
The weather agency also forecast that the typhoon could heavily impact Gangwon province, which may see up to 400 millimeters of rain, while other affected regions might see between 50 and 200 millimeters of precipitation. In response, the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures Headquarters raised its disaster readiness alert level up a notch to level 2 from level 1 as of 6 p.m. Monday. According to Interior Minister Lee Sang-min, the government will aim to dedicate its administrative power to preventing casualties by restricting access to areas prone to disasters such as mountains, underpasses, and old reservoir zones. The high alert comes as the recent monsoon season here in the country resulted in a number of casualties, including at an underpass near the city of Cheongju, where over a dozen people were killed when a riverbank collapsed and flooded the underpass. Welcome back up for more news. Let's take you around the world in a minute. A train carrying more than 100 passengers derailed in eastern Sweden as the rain partly washed away the railway embankment, injuring three people who were taken to hospital. Authorities in Spain and Portugal are warning that the risk of wildfires remain extremely high as residents brace for further scorching temperatures. Thousands of hectares of land were destroyed in central Portugal, while water bomber planes were deployed to battle a large place threatening homes in southern Spain. At least 23 people were injured and dozens of buildings collapsed after a 5.4 magnitude earthquake struck eastern China. It was the strongest to hit the province in more than a decade and was felt as far away as Beijing. Australian police arrested 19 men for allegedly sharing child abuse material online and saved 13 children from further harm after receiving intelligence from the FBI. The pink wave has yet to crest. The Barbie movie has sold more than a billion dollars worth of tickets at the global box office after just 17 days on general release. The milestone takes Greta Gerwig, the first woman to reach such heights as a solo director. And that is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. We'll leave you tonight in China as giant pandas amuse the crowds with lively oriental aesthetic presentation and momentous storytelling. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.